Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. We're gonna finish, so that is very good. And it's supposed we're gonna start on Monday, so that is very good. It's going to be very fast. Also, uh, tonight we're going to make the Insaforp survey. Remember that that is very important. We need to do it together. So uh, the survey actually will be at 8.30, okay? And uh, well, everybody has finished the platform, so that is also amazing. So today is going to be just some tests, some practice. You have a homework for tonight, so let's see how it goes. And uh, as usual, this is the uh, the class of today, and this is the question for today. So you can participate into that one, okay? And of course, you finished the platform already, so. We're going to then check about the, the attendance, of course. Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, I got you, Francisco. Good. Okay, so we're gonna start with a little video. Uh, today is free practice, but anyways, we're gonna watch some videos about some other slangs. You know, slangs change across uh, around the world. So we're gonna check some of those from Canada. So let's see how it goes. And then of course, we're going to check, uh, give opinions or comments about this one, okay? After we check the survey, we're going to do the homework. So here we go. Minasan, konnichiwa. Would you like to learn some Canadian slang? Would you like to be able to speak like a Canadian? Welcome to Jen's Jugio. My name is Jen and I am Canadian. And today I'm going to teach you 26 Canadian slang words. Let's get started, eh? Watch the video to the very end to learn a bonus Canadian slang. The very first slang word that I'd like to teach you is A. A comes at the end of sentences to turn them into questions. When we use A in Canada, we're basically using it the same way Americans might use the word right. Nice weather, right? Nice weather, eh? Number two. I mentioned that I am Canadian, Woo! You could say that I am a Canuck. Canuck is Canadian slang meaning Canadian. Any Canadian can be called a Canuck. Number three, we have a specific Canadian term called a hoser, a hoser. A hoser is slang for someone who, in the US they might call it a redneck, or like a hillbilly, a fat, clumsy, stupid man who likes to drink too much beer. 
That is a hoser. You're such a hoser, eh? Number four. There are three very specific Canadian slang words connected to drinking. This is Molson Canadian. This is probably the most famous beer in Canada. So, we have a slang word which is the Molson Muscle. A Molson Muscle specifically means someone has a beer belly. There is a slang word that is very useful for if you're buying a lot of beer for a party, for example. This expression is a 2-4. I'm going to the beer store and I have to pick up a 2-4 for the weekend. 2-4 means a pack of 24 bottles of beer. So if you're having a party, you need to pick up a 2-4 for the occasion. 24 bottles of beer in a box. The final slang that we have connected to alcohol is a mickey. A mickey is a small amount, one of those small flask sized bottles of alcohol, of hard liquor, usually of like whiskey or vodka. It's about 375 milliliters, right? So when you pick up your 2-4, maybe you want to get a Mickey of rum. Alcohol isn't the only drink that many Canadians love to consume. We also love to go to Timmy's to get our double doubles in the morning. So Timmy's is Canadian slang for Tim Hortons, just like my shirt and this cup, Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons is the most popular coffee shop in Canada. It is our nationwide chain of coffee shops. And the reason it's called Tim Horton is because it was founded by a Canadian hockey player named Tim Horton. Very Canadian. The Canadian slang for Tim Hortons is Timmy's. When you go to Timmy's, the drink of choice for many Canadians is a double-double. A double-double is when you get your coffee with two cream and two sugar. This is called a double-double in Canadian slang. Many Canucks have to go to Timmy's to get their double-double in the morning. Number nine. In my hand, I have a loony. Looney is Canadian slang connected to our money. Specifically, a loony is a $1 coin. Canadians are very practical, and the reason we call this a loony is because there's a picture of a loon on it. A loon is a type of bird that has a very distinct sound. Ooh. So our $1 coin is called a loony. If you put two loonies together, that would make two dollars, right? So, our two dollar coin in Canada is called a toonie. A toonie is our two dollar coin. You can get a double double at Timmy's for a toonie. Number 11. You might have noticed that I'm wearing this very stylish toque. Toque is Canadian slang for this particular type of winter hat. It has a pom-pom on it and it's like this. Number 12 is Chesterfield. Chesterfield is Canadian slang for this. It means sofa or couch. I'm just gonna relax on my Chesterfield because today I got caught in a kerfuffle and now I'm exhausted. Number 13 is kerfuffle. A kerfuffle is a situation where suddenly there's a type of conflict and everything goes crazy. The peaceful political protest suddenly turned into a huge kerfuffle and was just a big mess. It was like a total gong show. Number 14 is gong show. In Canada, we will say that something is a real gong show if it's a total disaster. It is a circus-like, tumultuous event that is way out of control. Wow, that was a total gong show. Oh god, that test was a disaster. It was a total gong show. I'm pretty sure I failed. On Boxing Day at the mall, it's just a total gong show every year. By the way, 
In case you don't know, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas, December 26th, and it is the biggest day for shopping in Canada. So I am a Canuck living in the six. The six is slang for Toronto. Okay, so if you hear someone say, oh, I'm from the six, it means they are from Toronto. I'm from Toronto, the six. The peg is Canadian slang for Winnipeg. Winnipeg is also a large city in Canada. So we have the peg and we have the six. However, the peg and the six are not the capital cities of Canada. The capital of Canada is Ottawa. Ottawa. This is not Canadian slang, but I'm always very, very shocked when people don't know the capital of Canada. When I was in Ottawa, I wanted to take a picture with the Mountie. Canadian slang number 17 is Mountie. Mountie is slang for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They are kind of like Canada's version of the FBI, but traditionally they wear red coats and high boots and cute little hats, and they ride horses. In Canada, you are not able to see Mounties every day. In fact, it's a little bit rare to see a Mountie. Usually, you only see Mounties at special events, or usually whenever I visit Ottawa, I'm able to see a Mountie. If I want to travel from the 6 to Ottawa to see a Mountie, it's about 450 clicks. Our next slang word is clicks. Clicks is slang for kilometers, right? So from Toronto to Ottawa, it is 450 kilometers. From the 6 to Ottawa, it's 450 clicks. Speaking of traveling, we have a very specific slang word for people who love to travel south for the winter. This expression is snowbirds. So if you call somebody a snowbird, it means that during the winter time they like to escape from Canada and go south for the winter. So many elderly people who are retired become snowbirds. These people are called snowbirds because they're migrating just like birds do in the winter time. Slang number 20 is keener. Oh my gosh, she's such a keener. So you might think keen, oh that's a good thing, you're keen, you're energetic, you want to do something. But when you call somebody a keener, it's actually negative. It's a similar thing to calling them a suck up or a brown noser. It's someone who is getting close to maybe their teacher or their boss or someone in authority and constantly saying nice things and acting super, super nice to that person, complimenting them a lot in order to get some kind of personal benefit for themselves. Sally's probably going to get the promotion because she's such a keener. Number 21, homo milk. This is homo milk. Homo is short for homogenized. Homogenized milk, in Canada we call it homo milk. And an interesting thing about milk in Canada. We sell milk in Canada in bags. This is a huge bag of milk. This is how you can buy milk. So inside this big bag, there are three smaller bags. Each one has about one liter of milk. So Canadian slang, homo milk is homogenized milk, and fun fact, you can buy milk in a bag in Canada. Number 22. In Canada, we often will call these type of shoes runners. Just runners. Sometimes running shoes. But I heard that usually in the United States, these are called sneakers. And in the UK, these are called trainers. But in Canada, we usually call them runners. Number 23, pop. This is pop, pop. In Canada, we call soda pop. In the US, they usually say soda, but we say pop. It refers to a carbonated, non-alcoholic soft drink. So if you're in Canada, you can drink some pop. <laughs> Number 24, pencil crayons, pencil crayons. This is a pencil. 
and this is a crayon. So when you put them together, what do you get? Of course, pencil crayons. These are pencil crayons. The rest of the world calls them colored pencils. They are colored pencils, but usually in Canada we call them pencil crayons. Number 25, Canadians like to call it the washroom. We don't say, I need to use the toilet. That sounds too dirty. We also don't say we need to go to the bathroom, because if you're in public, you're not taking a bath in that room. In America, they often use the word restroom, and in the UK, they often say water closet or WC. But in Canada, we use the word washroom. Finally, number 26. Number 26 is a specific word that we use to encourage people in Canada. So if I am really exhausted and oh my goodness, I am so tired. Everything was just a huge gong show today and I have no idea how I can finish my work to make my boss happy. What someone might say to me is, ah, just give her, just give her, which means just do your best. When all else fails, the only thing you can do is do your best. <coughs> oh, I feel so sick today. I don't think I can do anything. Ah, oh, just give her. You can do it. Just give her. So if you're struggling with studying English, don't give up. Just give her. So today, you learned 26 Canadian slang words that you can use to help yourself sound more like a Canadian. Please try using these words the next time you speak with your Canadian friends in English. It's great practice, eh? And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, what is your favorite thing about Canada? What's your favorite thing about Canada? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to learn more English every Monday and Friday when I upload new videos. Mina, thank you, gambatene! You might have noticed that I changed my clothes from earlier. One final bit of Canadian slang is a bunny hug. This is called a bunny hug in Canadian slang. Usually people in the prairies in Saskatchewan use this slang the most, but other Canadians use it as well. Bunny hug is slang for a hoodie, a hooded sweatshirt with no zipper. So this is my bunny hug. Also, this bunny hug is from York University. Please watch Jen's Jugyo next Friday to learn important vocabulary for university. See you in the next lesson. Okay, what did you get from this one? The three. My goodness. I don't know if someone was talking. <laughs> Do you know what it means if someone says? Okay. There are many, right? Many slangs, many words. So. I didn't imagine Canadian has a, has, has a lot of slangs. My God. The one that, but there were so too much of them funny and they were logical. For example, the one for washroom. Is that right? Uh, they are in public places, so they are not uh, toilets and neither WC. <laughs> Yeah. So that is the one that, and also the other one, it was, uh, there were a lot, but I um, was looking for, oh, pops is a pop. soda. Yeah. Pop. Mm -hmm. I didn't imagine that they had a lot of slack and they sound funny, not, I don't know, I maybe this because they are just words. I don't know if they have like sayings like in US that sometimes sound kind of complicated and they are not, they don't have like a relation with what you're trying to say or maybe the, um, um, uh, what we know that they um, uh, mean in Spanish, right? <laughs> I don't know if they, I guess they have also a lot of sayings, but that one for the wash, wa washroom. 
Okay, very good. Yes, it's very interesting. I mean, many words, of course, there are many more. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting is why, uh, and this is why I brought you some words, I mean, slangs. Yesterday we talked about some American slangs and today we're talking about some Canadian is because that happens. It, the same that happens in Spanish is the same that happens in English. I mean, if you go to Argentina or Colombia or any other country that speaks Spanish, uh, the language is different. Even if we speak Spanish and maybe we understand each other, mm -hmm. there are many words and not only the words, the accent, the way they talk. So it's totally, totally different. And uh, it's interesting uh, to check how to communicate in other places, right? Mm -hmm. Good, perfect. Any other comments on this? Comments or opinions on the video. Okay, so what are some slangs in El Salvador? This is my next question. And who would you explain that to uh, another person in English? So, for example, we have, I don't know. Ah, there are so many. Volado. <laughs> Volado, that is it. So how do you explain that to, to if somebody? If someone just hear it, maybe think is the past, is the conjugation past of fly. <laughs> the yeah, fly. maybe. <laughs> They're learning in Spanish, right? Them, uh -huh, there is a thing, is the common name. We call things, not, not using the proper name, it's just to mention or refer to something. Mm, it doesn't matter if it's uh, a male or female, it's a thing, it's a thing, it's a volado. <laughs> so yeah, something like that one, right? So it's like, for example, uh, you don't remember the name of any anything and you say mm -hmm. volado, right? So volado. give me the <laughs> volado, right? Very good, that is a good one. Actually, there is a word in English for that one, in American English, is uh -huh. whatchamacallit. So is can, what? Whatchamacallit. <laughs> what you want? Can you yeah. write it in the chat? Uh, -huh. uh yeah, I can. I can write it. So it's going to be like for anything. For example, you can say, "Hey, bring me the what's uh, a Whatever is that? So that is <laughs> it. That. Yeah, I mind that one. Uh, what other word we can ex express as a uh, slang in El Salvador? And how would you express or how would you explain that to a person in English? Bicho, for example, when you okay. refer to a, maybe to a, yeah, to a, a kid, a person, yeah, a person who is uh, among, for example, a teenager, uh, yeah, a teenager, maybe, uh, that bitch over there, uh, I, I was talking with that bitch over there last night or something like that. Uh -huh. Very um, good. <laughs> Yeah, that is something that is very common here. I mean, uh, bicho, come here. So in English, it sounds kind of, <laughs> sounds kind of crazy. In, in but... other countries, for example, near here in Central America, you say bicho in Costa Rica, they feel offended because it is uh, you're telling them animals. A bicho is uh, those one like ants, any kind insect. of animal. Mm -hmm. uh, like, an insect, like a bug. Yeah. Mm -hmm, like a bug. Yeah, that is true. And actually, that is the actual meaning. But here we use it in different ways, right? So, good. Uh, what other word comes to your mind? Maitro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. How, yeah. you, how would you explain that to somebody uh, in English? My, there, there are many kind of or variants. Of Ring man. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For example, uh, uh, when you are... Um, uh, from your 20, nah, for your 30, maybe uh, to 50, you are maitro, but when you are 50 or more, you are a maitrito or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. That is a good one. Yeah, you are so right. So, and you, uh, yeah, the good thing is that we are able to explain. Any other that comes to your mind? Chucho. 
Yeah, chucho. Chucho, yeah. So that is like a dog, right? Something like that. Uh, Suleima said something. Uh, chivo. How would you explain chivo to other person? In English, of course. Um, you can use chivo instead okay or instead great. That is it, something that is very nice, right? So when you say, hey, que chivo, so <laughs> something like that. Yeah, you see that there are many uh, words in every country. Uh, I mean, across the nations, even as we speak the same language, and that happens in English as well. So if you're planning to travel, definitely you are going to find things like that. Uh, in any country that you go, actually I have another video that we're gonna watch today and uh, you are going to find different words. And uh, I mean, maybe here in El Salvador because we we are familiar to the words, not a problem. I mean, you can say, hey, bicho, hablar el maestro, decirle que está chivo todo lo que me dijo. So, I mean, if somebody else from other country listen to that sentence, it's like, what? What do you say? I don't know. Even if they speak Spanish, right? It's like. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. So is that is why it's uh, important to sometimes understand and learn uh, all the kind of vocabulary, all the kind of, of things. So those things are very important. We're going to make a little pause and we're going to start the process of the of the survey for Insafor. Okay. Remember, remember that it's very important that you are going to provide the feedback about the course itself. Okay about the course, it's not about the schedule, it's not about uh, any other thing like the books of Insof Warp or any other thing. Uh, it's going to be just about the, the course that we have taken, okay? So that is very, very important. And oh, of course you have experience in this one, so let's make it together. You know that we have to share some video and then uh, let's do that survey together. So this is the little video, of course you know, how to do it, but uh, this is something we need to check. So here we go. Operativo, vamos a apoyarte para poder desarrollar la encuesta de satisfacción de manera correcta. Vas a recibir a tu correo electrónico personal la información con los datos correspondientes del curso. Vamos a ingresar y vamos a seleccionar el enlace para poder desarrollar la encuesta de satisfacción. Vamos a regresar al correo que hemos recibido y vamos a colocar el número de la orden de inicio siempre proporcionada por nosotros. La vamos a copiar tal cual está en el correo electrónico y la vamos a colocar en el punto número uno. En el siguiente punto vamos a colocar el nombre completo, que es de cada uno de ustedes. Lo vamos a copiar de igual manera en información que hemos compartido y lo vamos a colocar en el nombre completo. Siguiente a ello, vamos a colocar el correo electrónico personal que ustedes han proporcionado a Inglés Corporativo. De igual manera, vamos a colocar así el número de contacto que ustedes han proporcionado. Lo vamos a copiar. Y así lo vamos a colocar en el número de celular. Posteriormente colocamos el sexo. En el punto número 6 vamos a desplazar la flechita y vamos a buscar el departamento de residencia donde ustedes actualmente viven. De igual manera vamos a colocar el municipio en el cual ustedes están residiendo. En el punto número 8 vamos a colocar el nombre de la empresa. Cuidado en ese punto, ya que vamos a colocar el nombre de la empresa tal cual razón social y nosotros lo tenemos registrado. De igual manera, les hemos compartido el nombre correcto para que ustedes puedan colocarlo. En el nombre del proveedor, vamos a colocar de acuerdo a nuestro centro de formación, que es Inglés Corporativo Regal International. Vamos a desplazar la fecha y vamos a buscar el nombre de nuestro centro de formación. Lo seleccionamos 
Y en el siguiente punto vamos a colocar el nombre del curso. De igual manera, vamos a colocarlo tal cual está en la información que nosotros hemos proporcionado, tanto por correo electrónico y por WhatsApp. Vamos a copiar el número del curso. Y vamos a colocar. En el punto número 11, las evaluaciones que ustedes serán, las harán de manera individual y personal según lo que ustedes han vivido en el transcurso del curso. Las fechas de inicio, de igual manera, las vamos a poder verificar en la información que se ha compartido. En este caso, nos vamos a ir al calendario. Y debemos tener el cuidado ya que en el calendario podemos retroceder o adelantar las fechas. De igual manera, si no las fechas proporcionadas, vamos a tener que buscar el mes y la fecha indicada del inicio del módulo. En la fecha de finalización, de igual manera proporcionada por nosotros, vamos a desplazar el calendario y así vamos a seleccionar el día en el cual está finalizando el curso. En el punto número 14, vamos a colocar una valoración personal que ustedes han recibido de parte del desarrollo del curso. Posteriormente, ustedes pueden seleccionar algunos cursos de otro interés o algún comentario que ustedes tengan respecto al trabajo desarrollado. Vamos a darle clic en el botón azul de enviar y posteriormente vamos a recibir un mensaje de la respuesta a su enviado. Cuando ustedes han recibido este mensaje, favor de tomar una captura de pantalla, compartirla al grupo de WhatsApp correspondiente junto con su nombre completo según nosotros los tenemos registrados. Y es así como tú debes desarrollar la encuesta de satisfacción. Ok, so now, of Muy course, bien, we're going to check about this one. And, uh, well, you know that this is going to be the, the survey. Ok, so let's work together on this one. And, uh, ok, so the first one is going to be the number. Okay, so you have the number array, right? Number one would be the number. In case you don't have it, I have it here, and I can send it to you. So hit on the chat if uh, you don't have it, okay? Let's check here. Okay, send it to the chat just in case you don't have it. So and we're gonna copy it here. Okay, so everybody has finished number one. Is there anybody missing on number one? No. Okay. So number two, your name. Okay. According to Dewey and uh, uh, how you are in the Insta for course, how you are inscribed. Okay. So number two, anybody is missing number two? Nobody. Everybody's cool on that one. The email, it should be the email that is uh, the one that you are using to use the platform. So the one that you use to inscribe, to sign up. So um, number three, has everybody finished? Anybody's missing on this one? Not missing, okay. Number four is going to be the cell phone number. Okay, enter please your cell phone number. And let me know if somebody's missing. If anybody's missing, just let me know. Number five is gonna be very easy just to click. Okay, A anybody is missing on this one? No one is missing, that's good. So on the next one is going to be the department. So for me, it's Santana, but you can choose the one that is for you. Is anybody missing on this one?
nobody. Number seven uh, is going to be for me Santana, but you can type uh, the municipio, right? So where you live. Is anybody missing on number seven? No one, okay. Remember that number eight, it has to be exactly the name that you used to be inscribed into that one. La razón social, so that is very important. If you have questions on what is the name that they used to inscribe you, you can tell me so I can check. Is anybody missing number eight? Okay. Number nine is going to be um, Regal International, right? You know that that is the name that we have here. So is there anybody missing number nine? For the name of the course, of course, it has to be this one, right? So it has to be the one that we have there on the email. And uh, we just copy that one and take it to this one and get it there. Okay, is there anybody missing into this one? No one. Number 11, easy, just for you to come and check what you believe about this. The course, remember just the course, not any other thing. Anybody's missing number 11? Okay, the date for us to the day that we just start is the 5th of September. So uh, it's gonna be here. Just come here and go to September and then take the fifth day was a Monday. Is there anybody missing on number 12? Okay, this one's going to be very easy because it's today, right? It's going to be October the 12th. Is there anybody missing on number 13? Okay, and then number 14, satisfy or uh, not satisfy. Okay, let's take the option. And uh, is there anybody missing on number 14? Okay, so in the number 15, you can enter any other course that you are interested in or any comments on number 16 and then send it. And then please remember to send the, the uh, screenshot with your name to the group, to the WhatsApp group. I'm gonna check here and uh, we're going to wait until everybody has sent the screenshot. If you have questions, of course, you can let me know. I see, uh, I will tell you the names of the ones that I received. I have Heidi, Eugenia Salguero, I have Suleima Yvonne, I have Jose Osmin Rivas, Roberto Luis Umaña, Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Okay, good. And we have also Maria Alejandra Barrientos, Jose Marcos Rodriguez, Jose Wilfredo Ayala, Ramon Enrique Mata. Okay, there are missing just a few of you. Here. Teacher. Yes. Uh, I think I'm not in the WhatsApp group. I'm sorry? I think I'm not in the WhatsApp group. No way. Oh my goodness. Let me just check. Okay, let me then just do something here. Uh, 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 um. And don't you have uh, somebody else's WhatsApp number? I have uh, Danny already. Okay, let me see if I can add you right now. Okay. I got Sonia also, Danny and Sonia, good. Let's see, no, I am not able to, let me just check here. Okay. Let me just do something here. If you, if you tell me your uh, last four numbers, I think I can search you over my contacts on there. Well, the thing is that you need to have like a link for this one. Let me look for the link, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, I have it here, I remember. The one, when you started the course, you receive a notification on WhatsApp, maybe from Hazel. 
I'm gonna send the link here for you to add yourself. Okay, so okay, okay teacher. Uh, it's going to be on the chat here on the in Zoom. In Zoom. So that's the one I sent it already. So you just click on that one on your cell phone and you will be able to. Yeah. Okay, I will repeat everybody. If I don't mention your name is because I don't have your screenshot. Okay, so Heidi Eugenia Salguero, Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez, Jose Osmin Rivas Navas, Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana, Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez, Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero, Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala, Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto, Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar, Dani Josué García Martínez, Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros, Ana Claudia González Velázquez, Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Eh, I have already yours, I guess. Uh, uh, your uh, nickname is Iron Brown, right? Yeah. Good, so I have it very well. Thank and you. Azucena Cáceres. Okay, got it here. Very well. It seems that everybody has sent it. Very nice. So we can continue. Very good. Nice, nice. Perfect. So let's continue with the slangs. We were discussing about the slangs. So what other slangs are very from El Salvador that you would like to share with people from other countries? Any other that you remember besides the one that we already say? We have Chucho, we have Bicho. Any other slang from El Salvador? Uh, for example, teacher, we have the expression to describe a hard situation, a hard situation. To say yuca. Yeah, that is also another one. Very good. How would you explain that word to a person that does not speak Spanish? Uh, it means, or oh, when we are talking about yuca, we describe a hard situation or um difficult situation or. or I don't know, uh, like impressive to work. Something that shock you up or something difficult. Very That's good. Yeah, that is like a difficult situation, right? Something that is, uh, is not, it's not easy. Uh, of course, uh, maybe we need to explain also that it's different from the from the food, right, that we have. That is also very nice. Whenever you want to come to Chalchuapa, I will be your guy. Okay, any other word that you might tell them about this? Any other slang word that you would like to explain to people or, or that you believe that they can listen to and they can get confused, so we need to explain. No, there are many, but of course, maybe right now we cannot think about any of those. So we're going to go to the homework then. So yesterday we were saying that you were going to tell us today, who are you right now at this very moment? You can speak about anything, I mean, physical or uh, in your mind uh, or your career or things like that. And then you will tell uh, everybody, how would you expect to be in five years from now? Interesting. I would like to listen to that part. So who wants to be the first one? That is the first question. Who are you right now? Who will you uh, be in the next five years, five years from now? Okay, I'm gonna choose then. Very good. Uh, Ramon, are you here with us? 
yeah, Ramon is always working at this time, so it's not possible. Giselle. Hello, Giselle, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, Roberto is also uh, working. Jose Wilfredo. Everybody's at the supermarket tonight. Okay. Uh, let's listen then to Heidi. Okay. okay. Let me tell you that I've done this exercise before and it's okay. very interesting. Okay, good. Once I went to this um to this training about motivation. And they made us uh, do a presentation about the same thing, how we used to see ourselves in five years. And I kept the, it, we made a drawing, I remember. I remember we made this drawing and I draw myself uh, being the manager of, of this branch, uh, Torre Cuscatlan. And I draw my daughter with a, how do you say, birrete? Like the graduation hat. Uh-huh, exactly, the graduation hat. I draw a cat and, and an airplane. <laughs> and, I, and I could make it everything. I was the branch manager of, that, of this branch. Okay. My daughter graduated, I had the cat, and I traveled. It, it was amazing for me. And it taught me that uh, to achieve dreams is possible. Very and that's good. why that's why I love my my company that this much because they actually bound me to to think about new dreams because I have achieved so many already. Very good. Congratulations. That is very nice. So you were able to achieve all those things. And now the question is, how are you going to be from, from now, five years from now? What do you think? Five years from now, I'm going to become a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful grandmother. In five years, I hope so. I hope so. My new dream is that when I retire, I'll be able to help my daughter taking care of my grandsons or my granddaughters. That's one of my dreams, right? Um, in five years, I'll be very, very near to my retirement. I will, I see myself with no debt and no more mortgages living in my own house and be happy as always. I used to be, I, I always, I usually I'm happy with what I got. I'm not waiting to be happy until something is happening. I try to be happy all the time. Very good, congratulations. It seems that your life plan is very, very nice. And uh, yeah, I, I can see that you are a very happy person. I believe that that is one of the most important things in life, to be happy. Of course, it's important to have things, to have uh, uh, work and achievements, but definitely to be happy and to be with your dearest ones are, is very important. Of course, you are going to have a lot of flowers, right? And lots of, lots of plants. Ah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> one of my dreams is, is this, uh, now that you remind me, I would like to have this Avivero Cafe. Okay. I'd love to have one of those with my sisters. Oh, of course, cool. I'll invite you to come, all of you guys. Oh, we will be there. Well, <laughs> so, and we're gonna practice English and see the plants. Sure. It will be fantastic. Yeah, please let us know if that happens. Whenever that happens, let us know. Okay, sure, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. So, and now we're gonna to listen to Suleyma Yvonne. Is it possible for you by now?
not possible, okay? Ada Susena, is it possible for you? You are so quiet, this course, I don't know why. Ana Claudia. <laughs> what happened is that maybe, well, I realized, oops, there was a, a homework, but, but let's take it right now. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, if you have the time, you can write it down, but this is something that we can do in exactly. the advance in, in a natural way. Exactly. The, the first question, it was, who am I in different levels? Mm, who am I? Um, uh, now uh, I can say I'm uh, always been a happy woman, and but now, now uh, these days I'm taking my life in the giving the importance to me in health, mental health, and physical health, and everything that is important to me. Because in the past I had. I was, um, I, I, I can say like dying in life because I had too much debt. I was in the point that I, I was, uh, let's say, in almost broken everything. And the worst things happen because nobody wants, no, no institution, no banks can help you or they even are, they don't have the tools to help you because you don't have more money to, to distribute. I had, to learn how to manage my money. And I'm very happy with who I am right now because um, I have like now, this is my third year. And so I'm, I, I'm can I use the word established? Yeah, established. Econom okay, economical established. And also uh, I also gave my gift and I traveled in one of my last, uh, travel was uh, going to Peru uh, I didn't uh, believe I didn't believe that I was able to to go to Machu Picchu and it was a dream come through for me and all the play was so beautiful and, and I felt so happy because all what that was my gift for my birthday and I was saving my money I don't have debt so it was my money I spent because I was saving and I was able now I'm able to say I know how to save money and it doesn't and, and, and I'm so open in my mind that it doesn't matter if uh, I don't have a car I don't care if I had to I had to walk I walk if I do this and if I don't I, I minimize my expenses but not because I'm a I forgot the word tacaño <laughs> I'm not uh -huh, cheap. no it's because I'm happy with what I have and I think it's enough and, and another thing that I do right now is uh, I just make one task at a time in the past, I used to be too multitasking, and my God, no, my health and my mind, everything was, uh, it was running all the time. And now, no, I'm, I'm happy. For me, I stand that a pandemic COVID nineteen is a was and has been a blessing because now I know what is to sleep, because living in Santana I used to commune to San Salvador. And I was arriving at home like around 9, 9.30 p.m. But at 3.30 a.m., I was uh, walking up because uh, I must go again to San Salvador. So I didn't know what means to sleep. Now I know what sleep is. And, and I'm blessed because I work from my home. So I, who am I right now? I'm a, a established person. Uh, living in peace, trying to do my best to who is around me and living one day at a time because you don't know if the next minute or the next hour is the last one. So living uh, every day and every moment, living it as it is. And what I, my plans or what I'm going to be doing maybe in five years, oh, resting <laughs> yeah, because I'm, as I learn uh, 
to save money and to handle a budget, how to spend wisely my money and giving me permissions and enjoying traveling, eating what I want, but taking care of my of my health at the same time is making one thing at a time. So I will be, uh, I'm saving because I'm planning to, to be established. Maybe if right now I'm able to travel one time or two times in the year, I would like to multiply that to at least three times in the year. And it doesn't matter if it's outside the country. I love to go here and to beautiful places. You know? So the thing is to go out, to spend good time with good friends, uh, with your family, and living one day at a time. So that will be it. Amazing. It sounds like a very nice plan and uh, congratulations. I mean, sometimes, you know, we struggle with so many things and it's a very good thing that we find our path. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I, I really believe that nothing happens by, by, I mean, by everything happens, but for one reason. That for one be. reason, that's right. Oh, so yeah. that is it. So congratulations. It's a very good <laughs> thing. And if you need anything, but money, I will be there for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do a little pause so we can continue after we check the attendance, my friends, because the time flies. Let's see. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francis, Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Perfect. So we are going to continue with what we were doing right now. Uh, I got you, Aida. Okay, very well. So uh, let's continue with Juan Miguel Brand. Tell us about who you are and who you want. Uh, very good, Sonny, I got you, don't worry. Uh, okay, I am a man in his nearly 40s. <laughs> I have 88. I am a, a 38 years old, but from now to five years in the future, I hope that I could be a very fortunate man with my family, uh, with my kids, with my wife. Uh, if the life gives me the opportunity, I would like to travel um, to other country, but not just for pleasure. Uh, but for work and obviously trying to do the best for my family because um, in my plans I have I I think that we uh, travel to other country in order to uh, to look for new ways to develop yourself and to bring your uh, your kids uh, a better future uh, it's a good option, but obviously uh, we need 
to be prepared uh, with knowledge, uh, with the language, which is one of the most important things, uh, trying to, um, to learn every day something new. Uh, and if all of these situations could be given one by one, uh, I hope in five years, I, I will be working in another country and living obviously in, in another country. Um, talking about a uh, work life and about my passions. One of my passions is teaching, teaching or I, I, I don't talk about teaching uh, like the word itself. For me is sharing my knowledge for uh, people who are in the need of uh, learn something new. Uh, so in order not to be like a YouTuber or something like that, but uh, just have my own, not academy, but uh, a place over the internet when, where I can uh, monetize my knowledge. Uh, it could be a, a good, way in order to get more, get an, an extra income, okay? Uh, try to don't have any any deb, debts, debts, yeah, debts. Yes, debts. Uh, um, um, travel ar around the world uh, after if, God permits me, or if God lets me uh, do this, uh, when I uh, could be set settled, yeah, mm -hmm. Est or established the, in, in this new country, maybe. So um, those are my plans. Uh, in Two, two days ago, I was talking with one of my best friends. Uh, we have 20 years uh, of uh, meet, um, meet our, ourselves. So uh, we were talking about this, this, uh, this kind of situations. 20 years ago, we were at the university and we asked, uh, in some in some time, hey, hey, uh, could you imagine what we are doing in about ten years? But in the in the in that time, we 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 were eighteen or nineteen years old. So we were talking about twenty eight, twenty nine. Uh, and we we were talking about. Uh, do you remember when we were talking about this? Uh, I think uh, that you can plan many things, okay? But uh, in order to do these things, you have to encourage yourself first of all. Uh, to uh, get ready for all the situations uh, in, in, in related to work, related to your uh, family, your uh, many, many things that, that in, when we are like a teenagers, you don't think much of these things, but when you are in, evolving yourself, you are more uh, mature and you have to come to count uh, more about your environment, your uh, workplace, your incomes, your many, many situations that are surrounded you. So uh, if you imagine a life 
for this example, yeah, in five years, you have to encourage yourself, put all your energies and all your effort to give every day, uh, every single step in order to walk and to uh, try to, to your dream comes true, yeah? So it's not just to, to hey, I, I'm thinking this could be happening to me. No, okay, I, I want this could happen to me, but I have to put my effort, okay? And there is a, a, a phrase that says in Spanish, um, no, in English is like, if you want something new, something, something like that. If you want something new, you have to change some, something old that you do in order to get your newer version. Uh -huh. So for me, uh, that's my plan in my mind. So, but I think in that I am uh, doing the best possible in order to achieve that. Mm -hmm. Very well, perfect, very interesting. Thank you for sharing. And well, definitely, I hope you can settle down uh, in any other country that you would like. You know, life is difficult everywhere. I was reading today that for the next year, it seems that it's going to be worse than this year. So, uh, well, many things are happening, war in Ukraine and Russia, and uh, what happened in the pandemic that a lot of companies stopped working for a while. So uh, let's hope for the better. But uh, I mean, if you are with your family at the end, and if you are happy and you have a job and we have the money at the end here or there, if you are happy, that, that is the more important. So very good. Uh, of course, if you need anything, it will be a pleasure to help you. Thank you, teacher. Good, perfect. So let's listen now to Marcus Ayala. Okay, teacher. Um, the first question is what, who am I right now? Who you are right now, yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, now um, I'm about to get grad graduated from the university. I live, I live with my parents. I have one year since I started working and I'm obtaining more experience. Um, I'm saving money to buy a house or, and later a car, but I'm not rushing in with that. So I uh, go step by step. And in five years, um, I would like to um, have learned more from courses of in in my area. Uh, for example, learning uh, about new languages of uh, programming and perhaps change the the field of what I currently programming and I'm currently trying in web and I would like to develop mobile apps and so I need to study more courses online and and gain more knowledge. And also I would like to uh, like as I said before I would like to buy a house and a car and perhaps move alone, <laughs> um, get married perhaps, I don't know, and establish your, a, a family by my own. Um, I would like to travel um, to visit another country. I go in, in Europe, for example, I would like to visit my, my sister who lives in, in, in Spain right now. So. I'll let you do that travel perhaps in five years would be a, a right time. Um, what else? Um, yeah, just that I'm only 23 
years old now, so I have five years will be 27 or 28. So I have to, uh, a long way still, yeah, a long way ahead. So um, I have to think more about that five, five years outside. Right now, I don't have uh, many things in my mind, but uh, um, just that for now. Very good, perfect. Thank you for sharing, Marcus. Yeah, you know, it's one step at a time. And uh, what you can do is just be ready for that one, right? Be the man that you have to be. Um, I mean, if you... If there is a girl for you, you are going to find it. If there is a house for you, it's going to be there for you. Uh, you just need to open your eyes and live your life at maximum. So everything is uh, wonderful and grateful. And you're a nice person. I'm very sure that you are going to find. Just be careful because the world is sometimes difficult. But other than that, best of the wishes there. Thank you, teacher. Good, perfect. So now we're going to listen to Maria Alejandra Barrientos. Hi, teacher. Hello. <laughs> um, in my case, in this moment, I feel um, or I try to have a other opportunity for start my business, for say like this. Uh, the years ago or the months ago, I work in a company, in an insurance company, uh, maybe seven years. And I took a decision and I decided that and that previous company I don't like and, and try to do um, a different thing for myself for like this. And I have two months to start with this new adventure and it's not easy, but is complete say that um, how is the future with my <laughs> a professional a career i have a master degree i i only have 29 <laughs> i think that i feel young and i think that this is an opportunity to give me a one chance to try to different things and I hope that the all my plans and um, I don't know how do you say like con uh, continue that way or that it continue good and I have the opportunity and blessed for my father have a company and feel me or give me a support for that products try to sell and in my case then I didn't have or um, it's not necessary have a or that invest in that the product because I only try to move and I don't know. <laughs> I feel that I I have me I have a timeline and that this is six months and I try to do my best job, try to uh, practice all my knowledge in the different students or studies or like this. I think that have uh, the capacity, capacity, uh, the capacidad? capability, uh, capa capability, mm -hmm. and I don't know in this moment 
this my is my present and I try to do the best work for that the future and I hope that is my is if my way uh, I think that all the all the things that good uh, and I in this moment I don't thinking a kid I don't thinking I'm married <laughs> and I think I'm yes in both my or buy my house or like this but step by step that the when I feel established or established I I take a different decision that when I when I feel is at the moment, but in this moment I concentrate only for try to have more clients, uh, move the product, have more, and know the oh, I don't know uh, the market. I know the market, and is is only that for <laughs> in this moment. Okay, very good. Actually, you have lots of plans. That is very nice. What kind of business would you like to run? Uh, yeah, I have a... Um, I try to sell that ribbons, satin ribbons. Okay. Uh, because that the company ha is a wholesale for the tex textiles. Textiles, uh -huh. uh, Textiles. And in this moment, only try to send or only try to move a ribbon, all type of ribbon, and, and try to know that the other person need to buy and it's difficult to find or like this, and try to see the other products that maybe have the opportunity to sell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting, very good. So let us know whenever you have the business so we can help you out on that one. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. Perfect. Thank you for sharing, Maria Alejandra. Okay. Good. Francisco, are you there with us? Yes, teacher. Okay. You. Could you please share then your, uh, who are you right now and what do you expect to be like in uh, the next five years? Okay, teacher. Well, uh, in this moment, uh, uh, I consider I, I am a, a home man. <laughs> it's just, uh, I don't know if this, this is the correct word. Uh, uh, I have, uh, I am from this, uh, 35 years old, uh, uh, I uh, married uh, uh, four years ago, and I have uh, a one one child. And in this moment, I I feel uh, very good with my with the, with my family, and in in my uh, work. Uh, uh, I working in the operative area, and the idea uh, is for the next uh, five years move to the uh, operative area to the management. Uh, I uh, and the idea is is uh, get more knowledge uh, about about. Uh, uh, other position, uh, for example, supervisor uh, or a manager, and this is the the idea. And then the, the other plans uh, for my uh, personal area is uh, create new habit. Uh, for example, uh, the. Uh, uh, try uh, read 
more book um, and doing exercise. And the, and the plan for, uh, and the other plan is a, a, a start a business. Uh, I always uh, like me to the uh, food business. And this is the idea for the next uh, five years, try uh, to start uh, this kind uh, of business. And this is the, the plan issue. <laughs> I hope uh, uh, do uh, anything that I think. <laughs> Thank you uh, for sharing, Francisco. Yeah, I'm very sure that, uh, well, you know, as in any plan that we have, you have the goal and you have the diagnostic of who, you, uh, where you are right now. So the only thing that you need to do is to identify the step for you to achieve that goal. And I'm very sure that you are going to be able to, to get it. Okay, so let's listen now to Jose Rivas. Are you here with us? Not possible, okay. Fernando, is it possible for you? Uh, yes, teacher. Perfect. I'm just playing at home, so I okay. don't practice. I don't practice. My... I don't worry. If you are able just to speak, that will be fine. No, not a problem. That's why we are here. Okay. Okay, the question is, what are we right now? Yeah, so there are two things. Who you are at this very moment in your life and who do you expect to be in five years from now? Okay. Now, <clears throat> now, in simple world, now I am an, an employee and five years I will hold be an employer. But uh, now... Uh, I know I employees from a company that is a good company. And I have other obligation in my house because I have a family, I have two children, children. And I have a lot of occupation, not only in my work, at home with my children. And I know my, my time is very limited. But um, right now I'm a very positive person because I am tired most of the time, but I I have um, I am enthusiastic. Um, my plans for next year is maybe um, start with a with a master degree, and after that, uh, my plan is work along or work with. With, um, with some person, but not as employee, maybe a consultant or similar. And I really hope in five years, I will have, I will have that. And obviously take, take of my family, my children, and teach them uh, that good, they good, Tens of the life. Very That's good. It. Perfect. Thank you for sharing, Fernando. Yeah, of course, you are very disciplined. I know that you have a lot of things to do, but I see that, for example, you dedicate a little bit of your time to English. That is very good. And that shows that, yeah, if you go step by step, you will be able to, to get to the goals that you are looking to. Very good. Perfect. Now, Danny, Josue. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> just uh, just Fernando say, and and I'm an employee right now, and I'm 32 years old, and um, I'm single right now, but <laughs> in a very few months I'm going to be mar get married. Congratulations. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, no, it, it's good. Uh, uh, I'm in this part of life that you are planning and doing all the things that you have to do <laughs> before this uh, event um, that you plan for once in a lifetime, right? Um, well, um, we, another thing, um, no, no, the, this is for the plant. And I'm a person who has come from the down, I can, if I can see in that way, or from below, I don't know how to say. From and the bottom. I, from the bottom, I have fired, I have fired <laughs> with all kind of things in my life. Um, I passed for a very, very, very bad situation. Um, but, but when, but believe me, when I say very bad situation, it's a very bad situation. Right? And I think if I, 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 if I didn't pass for this situation, maybe I, I, I don't know how to say. I don't. I didn't. I will. I wouldn't be that I, <laughs> that I, that I am right now. And I have learned many things in life, and I'm continuing learning. Um, I right now I have um middle management position and I I know that I have in very I don't know a lot of time from now and for continuing development and gain more experience and try to get from the, on the top I school uh, that I could get on and well and, and my plan and well I can divide it in, in, in areas uh, financially I first I I want to be an entrepreneur. I think it's the word, an entrepreneur. Um, learning all this kind of thing. I have learned some things, and I have a master degree in business administrator. And but in the in the reality, <laughs> it's different. And it's kind of different, but the the base I, I, I have. And well, another thing is to, um, is to take, to, to take care of my health. And this for the, in the very short time, because right now um, the, my time is so short and my time, my, my free time, I, I have to to adequate my time uh, for in order to 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 do the things. Um, another thing is to do in my own house. And right now, in in a worldwide and level and. The real estate situation is very, very complicated. And the price of the house is very, very, very expensive. Um, well, another thing is just that if uh, I want to, uh, to be free to do that I want to do, I think life it's about that. If you if you are if you are able to do what you want to do, I think you you are happy. 
I think. So um, for for achieve that, um, you have to work <laughs> very hard. Um, so that um, I think I want to retire um, before the age uh, <laughs> that uh, the the average. And just that, and don't with uh, my girlfriend or my fiance and I didn't. We don't um, plan to have kids <laughs> right now. Just, just um, oh, us be two, but you never know, right? And just that. Perfect. Thank you, Danny. It seems. Uh very interesting all your plans it seems that you really uh, know where you want to go so that is very important and uh, congratulations again on your wedding i know it's a very important step and uh, yeah kids we never know uh, but whenever you love somebody i mean probably you are going to decide for kids maybe not soon but in the future so um, and yes i mean uh, you will be able to get everything that you want if uh, you made the step-by-step -step guides on that one. So that will be very good. Thank you for sharing. And we're going to listen now to Roxana Asensio, my cousin. Hi, good evening. Hello, how are you? I'm just fine. Well, let me see. Who I am? Mm, well, I think that I'm a friendly person. Always, I am a very, I am very busy because uh, I, I am workaholic. But also, I like spend time with my family. I usually don't have um, much time or a lot of time for myself because uh, I always um, I always am working or studying something something or doing tasks or homework with my son. So I don't have enough time but for myself. But I try to I try to rest in a little and let me see. Well, actually, I'm working in an um, investment company. Mm, let me see. Um, maybe four months ago. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, holding. It's from a group of companies. It's, uh, it's a holding in my previous um, my previous job it, it was an insurance company has Alejandra uh, said and now I'm working for the same holding but in different company my current uh, company is an uh, investment company in United States and um, well it, it's it's um a leader about me and how I can or how I want to be or get in five years uh, maybe in five years I hope to have uh, economics Stability. I have now, but you know, we always thinking in save money and spend in a specific um, specific uh, articles. And I don't know, maybe I would like to be a bilingual. Now I try. <laughs> But I know that I have to improve a lot. And the last time I was saying that the, the now my current job is um is in the United States and I have to use my English 
more than the past. So I try to improve. And um, let me see, in five years, I would like travel around the world and work remotely form in a remotely form for a multinational company has a process leader or manager. And finally, it is possible change my car for a newer one. Very good. It seems that you have specific plans. So that is very, very nice as well. And you are moving on. So you started already to reach your plan. So that is also yes. very, very important. I mean, yeah, we we need to set some goals and then start moving towards them, right? So yes. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. And thank you everybody for sharing. It was interesting. And uh, yeah, I I Everybody, you know, we have plans all the time. Plans never stop. I mean, life goes on and we continue planning for tomorrow, for the next week, for the next year. So if you have dreams, my friends, go for them. But do something about it. That is very important. You need to actually do some steps and do some things so you can achieve those dreams. And be in peace that is also very important to be in peace and also to to be happy you know it's not possible to be happy all the time but if you are a nice person and you take care of your loved ones everything will be fine okay good so uh we're gonna watch a video that is the last one about slangs this is about uk hey that is not the one this is the one okay so let's check into this one and then we're gonna identify uh, or comment or provide opinion so let's see how it goes do you know what it means if someone says they can't be asked if you need some bog roll any ideas if someone's chuffed how do they feel and if the party was dead does that mean it was a success or a bit of a failure well, if you don't know what some of these words mean, then this lesson is going to be very useful indeed. Today, I'm going to share what I think are the 40 most essential slang words in British English. I will stress that many of these words that I'm going to share with you today are more British, although there's one or two Americanisms that might creep in there. Yes, today is all about slang. It's been a while since we've dedicated a lesson to slang, but today I want to share essential slang. Slang that I would use, slang that you would hear on the street, in television series, soap operas, down the pub. Yes, these words are a part of our day-to-day -day English, but they're not the kind of words you're going to get taught in a book or maybe even at school. So if you want to learn what it means to be chuffed, knackered, bonkers, or if something's a bit manky, then you better keep watching. Welcome back to Love English. Let's get started with the lesson. Right, back to slang. Let's have a look at some very simple alternatives to saying yes, no, no problem, bye, Sorry, thanks, and of course, hello. Number one, and actually, I didn't realize when I used this word once with one of my students that they wouldn't understand. Nope. Instead of no, you can say nope. And it is kind of, that's it, nope. I don't want to do it, or I don't like it. Have you done your homework? Nope. Again, it's informal, it's slang, so be careful when you use it. It can sound a little bit rude. And as a second alternative to no, there is nah, nah. Do you fancy going to the cinema tonight? Nah, not really. So nope or nah. In the same way, we could say yes or yeah. Hopefully some of you have heard yeah before and realized it's slightly more relaxed form of yes. But did you know you can also say 
you bet you bet so this is a great very enthusiastic way of saying yes have you done your homework yet you bet number three two alternatives again to sorry now the first one i'm going to give you soz soz i would say is very informal very much spoken or in a text message i personally would not use soz it sounds a bit strange to me but you may come across it yourself and certainly in a text message might be more common however i'm more likely to say my bad my bad this essentially means my mistake and yes before some of you start commenting below my bad is more american but as always the american language has heavily influenced british english and so you will often hear my bad my bad did you break that vase soz my bad number four would you mind going to the shops and getting some milk yeah no biggie no biggie meaning no problem no problem again very common i would probably even use this in some situations and you will certainly hear it a lot in informal english number five and this is so simple but really often used cheers cheers an alternative to saying thanks when i get on the bus i often say cheers or get off the bus cheers to the driver and of course you will hear it being used when you're clinking glasses making a toast but in this context it doesn't mean thank you cheers in informal situations can mean thanks thank you and if you want to be super lazy you could always use just two letters ta ta works really well in a text message but also when you speak ta for doing the washing up i was way too lazy this evening to do it now hello there's nothing wrong with it perfectly acceptable of course all of these words are what i'm trying to do is give you a broader vocabulary and also help your comprehension particularly when you're listening to native speakers so instead of hello a lot of native speakers will often say hi or higher higher whether that's in a text message an email higher is more informal high is quite neutral but again more common in informal situations certainly in an email it would be informal now bye or goodbye absolutely fine a little bit boring instead why don't you say see ya see ya see you later see ya or a great one that you might not know it is an acronym ttfn ttfn any ideas what it could mean probably not ta-ta for now not so commonly used but certainly some members of my family do use this ttfn ta-ta for now try putting it in a text and seeing if anyone understands you'll be surprised at how many english people natives do know this but i don't think you guys would Okay, those were the very simple words that I wanted to give you some slang alternatives for. Now, moving on to a range of vocabulary. Pay attention. If it is a verb, you will see a V. If it is an adjective, you will see A, D, J. If it is a noun, N, or an adverb, A, D, V. So pay attention to that code because sometimes I forget to say whether it's a noun, a verb, or an adjective but it's important you know what form the word is in because it helps you know how to use it now i think these next three are some of my favorite slang words in british english asked asked essentially when you say i can't be asked i can't be asked it means i can't be bothered i'm too lazy have you done the hoovering yet today oh i can't be asked really do i have to Number nine, any idea what a bog is? No, I'm not talking about a swamp. I'm talking about somewhere in your home or indeed many buildings, hopefully. The bog is the toilet. That's right. It's a very informal word for toilet. So if you ask someone, could you tell me where the bog is? 
you're asking in a very informal way, can you tell me where the toilet is? Not the best thing to do in a restaurant, but if you've got an English teacher, she might have a little bit of a laugh, a chuckle to hear you say bog. On the same theme, number 10, bog roll. Any ideas what this might be? Honey, we've run out of bog roll. Yes, if you've guessed toilet paper, you are right. This one actually reminded me of a very funny situation where a student of mine misunderstood bog roll. I think somebody explained it to him as arse paper. Um, we never say arse paper. It's funny, but it's just not English. Um, so bog roll would be as informal as it gets, really. And again, not to be used in a restaurant, in formal situations, at work, just as a laugh with friends, perhaps. Bog roll. 11. If you want to call someone crazy, in fact, we have a lot of words, slang words for crazy in English, then you could say bonkers. Bonkers. She is absolutely bonkers. She was up till two o'clock dancing at the disco last night. Crazy. Bonkers. So a great word to use to describe somebody that's a little bit, yeah, crazy. You can use it in a kind of friendly, non-aggressive way to say to someone, oh my goodness, you are bonkers. What did you want to do that for? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're calling them mentally unstable. It can just be about their behavior or their choice. So depending on the situation, your tone of voice, it's not necessarily offensive. Number 13, a word that you will come across a lot when describing children. Cheeky, cheeky. Now your cheek is actually this, this is your cheek. But cheeky is actually meaning a little bit naughty, not in a bad way, usually in quite a funny, almost sweet way. But when you say someone is cheeky, you're saying it in a playful way. Wow, he was a little bit cheeky last night asking you for a dance. She is such a cheeky monkey, always asking for chocolate when she comes round. So a little bit naughty. Again, in a playful way. It's not rude, it's not impolite. It's simply saying that someone's a little bit naughty. Number 14, to be chuffed. Or you might hear the phrase, I am chuffed to bits simply means I am happy. I am really, really happy. I was chuffed when I heard that they'd got engaged. I am so happy for them. I was chuffed to bits when I got my exam results. They were all A's. So chuffed, happy, informal, not rude, not impolite, but very commonly used. Number 15, you guys know this one, a cuppa. A cuppa, fancy a cuppa? Have you had a cuppa? Oh, I'm dying for a cuppa. Yes, a cup of, and it is always, ladies and gentlemen, tea. You would not use cuppa to talk about coffee or water or anything else. It is purely about tea, and usually traditional British tea. You wouldn't say a cuppa and have a herbal tea. You could say herbal tea, but cuppa is that nice, strong British brew. So fancy a cuppa, be careful, number 16 and 17 sound very similar and the meaning is not that different. So be careful how you use them and make sure you understand the difference. Cushy, cushy. Cushy simply means to be easy. Her new job seems rather cushy. She doesn't have to do much at all. Just type a few emails. Now, kushti is sometimes used in a similar way, but what it actually means is excellent, excellent. I've got a new job and they pay me loads of money. Wow, kushti. So cushy and kushti. But I do think that sometimes people kind of use them interchangeably. So don't worry too much if you do make a mistake with these. Cushy, comfortable, easy, without many demands. Whereas kushti is usually referring to something being excellent, amazing. Now, this one is a great one because if you get the pronunciation wrong, which many people do, then you could use the slang alternative. Comfy, comfy, meaning comfortable. 
comfortable. Comfortable, comfy. So comfy means comfortable, that's it. Oh, my bed is so comfy in the hotel. Kushti. Number 19, dead. Yes, we know that dead usually means not living any longer, but in this case, it means quiet. There is no one. The bar was dead last night. There was no one there because the weather was so bad, people didn't want to go out. Number 20, dodgy, dodgy. This is a very common slang word and it essentially means that someone or something is not trustworthy. If we're talking about a person, it means they're not a very trustworthy person. He seems a bit dodgy, I'm not really sure about him. But if you say that something is dodgy, it could mean that perhaps it's not working very well or you think it might break. The car seems to be a bit dodgy at the moment, so I'm taking it easy. Number 21, a dog's body, a dog's body. A person who takes care of menial, boring tasks, particularly ones that people don't want to do. So if you say that someone is a general dog's body, it means they do all the boring, uninteresting, unpleasant often jobs. Pick up your own toys, I'm not your dog's body. Number 22, if something is a drag, it means that it's rather tiresome, boring or troublesome. Oh, it is such a drag doing homework after school. I just wanna sit and watch some Netflix. Now number 23 is actually one that I would commonly use to say that something is amazing, fantastic. Fab, fab. Do you fancy having lunch tomorrow? Oh, that would be fab, I'd love it. So fab meaning fabulous, but actually probably more commonly used by women rather than men. You can of course use it, whatever your gender, but I would say that this is more commonly used by us girls. If you want to describe someone as being maybe a little bit unreliable, you're not sure whether you can rely on them to turn up on time or to do what they say they're going to do, you could call them flaky, the adjective, or a flake. Yes, it's simply a way of describing a person who's unreliable, perhaps changes their mind quite a lot. For example, he promised to be at the meeting yesterday. I can't believe what a flake he is. Number 25, when you want to express that you are very, very disappointed. Gutted, gutted. I was so gutted about my exam results. I worked really hard. So to be very, very disappointed. Number 26, what is that in the fridge? Oh, it's well manky. Manky means disgusting. So if you say that I've got a manky finger, it might be because, you know, when you've trapped your finger in the door and it goes black and then the nail falls off, it's really manky. It means disgusting. Have you cleaned the bathroom? It is so manky please give it a clean. So manky, adjective meaning disgusting. Number 27, if you are feeling a bit miffed, it means you're irked, you're disappointed. I was so miffed I missed out on the tickets to that concert. I really wanted to go. She was a bit miffed that he didn't turn up for her date on time. Honestly, why couldn't he just text? Number 28, to murder, murder. Now it doesn't mean that you're gonna kill someone. I could murder a burger right now. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna murder that chocolate bar when I get home. Meaning devour, eat in a rather enthusiastic way. To murder, doesn't mean you're gonna kill anything, just means you're going to devour, to eat something quite quickly, quite enthusiastically. Number 29, a lovely expression when you want to tell someone that maybe they've been a little bit silly, maybe foolish. You could say, oh, you numpty, you numpty. Of course I would help you. Why didn't you ask? You're such a numpty. So it's not offensive if you say it in that way. And in fact, it is quite a gentle way of saying someone's been a bit foolish, a bit silly. You numpty. 
Now I did say there were a lot of slang words for crazy and nutter is one of them, one that we would frequently use. God, you are a bit of a nutter sometimes. Why did you stay out drinking till two in the morning? <sighs> nutter. So meaning crazy, that's it. Again, it's not really offensive. You could say it to friends in a kind of joking way, but nutter is one like bonkers we would commonly use in English. Number 31, a kerfuffle. Kerfuffle. If there is a kerfuffle, it's describing an argument or a commotion, something's going on. There was a real kerfuffle when someone tried to jump the queue and didn't go to the back of the line. So an argument or commotion, a kerfuffle. This is very, very British. I don't think you would have this in American English. So if you do hear the noun kerfuffle being used, then you know they are talking about an argument or a commotion, something happening, some kind of disturbance. Okay, since that is too much to watch all the video, but there were so many uh, interesting that you see the accent, how it changes uh, from one place to another, and uh, a lot of words that are so unique. There are some words like this one that is a kerfuffle that is also in Canada, right? Also remember that Canada is a kind of part of the uh, British people, right? So it's like a colony. So and maybe that is why, I mean, because I mean, lots of people from England, they go to Canada and they're free there. So um, that is the reason why. Uh, we can continue researching about these kind of words, slangs, and also some other phrasal verbs that we can think about it. So, uh, but by now I guess it's good enough. So my friends, do you have any questions before we finish? Questions about anything that we have checked in the class or the books or the platforms or anything else? Not mm, no. Very well. Okay, so we are going to finish this module, advance number two. So uh, as I was telling before, it seems that we will be starting next Monday according to some uh, information that I have seen there in the um, the academy in Inglés Corporativo, so it seems that we will be starting this incoming Monday. Okay, so uh, if you send the papers, we will meet there. It, it seems that we will be together at least on this number three. And of course, we're going to change some things uh, and we're going to continue with some tasks so we identify some things that we need to improve. Anyways, we are going to have a little vacation. I hope you have a wonderful week, a very nice, a marvelous uh, weekend. I hope I can see you on Monday or if it's not this Monday, the next Monday. Rest very well, sleep these days, enjoy your days. Please, please practice English. You know how important this is. If you need anything, you can chat with me. Even when I am not your teacher, you know that you can count on me. It was a pleasure to be with you and see you around. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you I appreciate there your is no time, attendance. Yes, your knowledge. Thank you for your time. It was amazing, my friends. Thank, Thank you for all, sure. teacher. Thank bye, you. guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you, Bye. It's a pleasure. Up to see you. Thank you, teacher. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you, Ada.